Dave, thank you for those kind words. And uh, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Absolutely perfect night out there, beautiful night in the greatest city in the world. And we've got literally 70 or 80 people in here that want to find out about what's next for Florida basketball. So that's really cool. And I do appreciate all of you being here. Uh, I like to start these uh, events anytime that I get to get up in front of the room. I start with trivia. And uh, so I walk in here with two of the best made Fordham basketball t-shirts ever made. And my first question, please raise your hand, is uh, what is the record for most wins in Fordham basketball history for one season? 1970-71. Yes, but how many wins? 26 and 3. 26 wins. <laughs> Question number two, over the last five years, uh, how many bids has the Atlantic 10 gotten to the NCAA tournament? Five years, last five years. Raise your hand, raise your hand. 25. No, fewer than 25. 21, who said it? Good answer. So you think about that, 21, uh, 21 bids over the last five years and uh, that is one of the biggest reasons that I'm here at Fordham. I'm very proud to be the coach at Fordham. I'm very proud to be coaching here in New York City but the opportunity to have four plus bids every year from one conference that's the most appealing thing to a coach like myself as I try to find reasons to come here to New York and, and to take this job. How well can you hear me in the back? No way. Alright. Um, I think the idea here tonight is uh, for me to just introduce myself and uh, again, I'm really appreciative that you've all made the trip. Um, to talk about my history as a coach, I was fortunate to work for 12 years as an assistant, including 8 years with Coach Beeline. And what I learned working for John Beeline was that you've got to be innovative, you have to be creative, you can't say, well, we don't have a point guard, we can't win. You can't say, we don't have a rebounder, we can't win. We've got to find ways to win. And that is my biggest mission and my biggest task here at Fordham, is to take our guys and adapt the young men that we have in our program to a system that will work. And as I get into different messages for you here tonight, probably my main message to you if you are a Fordham alum, or if you have donated money at some point to Fordham University or Fordham Athletics, or if you've even just been to a basketball game and tried to support Fordham basketball, one of my biggest messages to you is, you deserve to win. And so I know that you all have been through a very rough patch. Um, it's been very difficult to do the thing that you're after. The reason we compete, the reason we play games is to win. And I know it's been very difficult. And we do have a locker room full of young people right now that are incredibly eager and very hungry to show that they can win. And they are working at it every day. We've had a great summer session. The great thing, Dave mentioned my text to Chris Zangfelder when he was over in Germany. The great thing is that Chris Zangfelder is as crazy about basketball as I am. And I was in my office one night, literally at 9.30. Um, this is like three weeks ago. And he comes into my office at 9.30 at night because he wants to talk about post defense. And it's bothering him that Ryan Rubes is scoring every single time in open gym at the post. So Chris Zayfelder and I are two guys that are cut from uh, St. Paul. Uh, so my message about if you deserve to win is that I appreciate what you've done and your loyalty to Fordham, and I hope that continues. And we are gonna give you a product and we're gonna give you a team that you're gonna be proud of. I do think we have a great form, uh, foundation in place. We do have several guys that are in the program right now that are very good players. And so when I talk about having a one-year plan, and I talk about what can be accomplished this year, it's not just a coach walking into a new situation and hoping. I truly believe that we've got a foundation that 
you know, we may not win the national championship this year. <laughs> but there is enough there is enough in place where we can turn this thing. We can flip this thing and give you what you deserve as far as a winner. Um, by the way, I'm gonna stand up here and ramble for a little bit longer and then I am definitely gonna open this up for questions and that's where we find out what you really wanna know. But a lot of people have asked me about style of play. And again, our style will adapt to who we have. But the one thing that we are committed to is being the most aggressive team in the country within our half-court defense. And so as you're trying to decide, hey, should I get on this train and go up to the Bronx to watch a game tonight, understand you're gonna see something defensively that you don't see in college basketball. You're gonna see guys um, playing as aggressively as you've ever seen in the game of basketball. And so what I mean by that is last year, West Virginia led the country in steals. They did that by pressing for 40 minutes of every game they played. Our Eastern Kentucky team last year was second in the country in steals. And we did that by just playing incredibly aggressively, not allowing anyone to make any passes in the half court. And so that could take a little time to develop. But the idea is, once it happens, once our guys get it, and we're stealing the ball, we're getting layups and dunks in transition. It's something that translates really well for the fame. One other thing about our style of play is that offensively, we always recruit skill. And what that means is we put at least four shooters on the court at once. And so again, I think from your perspective, what is fun to watch? If we put four or five guys on the perimeter, we play the right way, meaning we pass the ball, we share the ball, and we get open threes and guys shoot them in, it's fun. So again, as you're at that decision point where you're, should I walk over to the train station or, or not, um, we really are gonna need you in the stands and we are gonna play a style that is, that is really exciting. One other, other major message for you before I open up for questions. In addition to winning, and that's my job, that's what we have to do, we have to win. Okay? What we need, and the vision that I have for Fordham basketball begins with November and December of this year. We are gonna play eight home games in Rose Hill Gym, and we need not only for each and every one of you to be at those games in November and December. I'm not even, I don't even care what you do during the A-10. Okay? We get to the A-10 schedule, you'll make up your mind by then whether the team's worth watching. But we've got eight home games in our building, and we've got to create a home court advantage that really means something. We've got to win our home games. And again, that's my job, but maybe the reason that some of you came out tonight were, was to find out what can you do to help Fordham basketball. The answers are, you could give a contribution. You could give some money that would help us as far as how we travel or help support our academic uh, advisor. The other thing you can do is come to our home games in November and December and really form an opinion about our team. And don't just come to Rose Hill Gym, but come with 10 of your favorite enemies, <laughs> 10 of your best friends. I don't care who you come with. But our goal for November and December is that literally we need to sell out, and that may sound crazy, but regardless of who we play, we have got to sell out our 3,200 seat arena to kick things off. And when I say sell out, I mean literally, someone needs to walk up to the door of Rose Hill Gym and be turned away and told there are no more seats. All right, that's my vision, all right? I'm not after what's gonna happen once we get to January, we'll figure that out when we get there, but, we do need your support as far as coming to see our team early in the year. Who's going to kick this off with a question? Let's get to what you really want to know. All right, so the question is about our non-conference schedule. All right, so we're going to play Boston College in Barclays. That game will be right before Christmas. Uh, we're going to play St. John's somewhere. 
We're still working that out. We've been talking with them and negotiating, and it's crazy. But we're going to play them somewhere. Uh, Manhattan game has been moved back to campus, so that one will be in Rose Hill Gym. We're going to, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you like that. Because actually, with the St. John's game, and I know how great the garden is, I get it. My favorite option for the St. John's game is to go play on their campus this year and get them back to Rose Hill next year. And I don't know if that's going to work or not, but hopefully you would, you'd be appreciative of that too. Um, yeah, so we do have five freshmen that we've signed, and two of them have been on campus already here during summer one. The other three get here on Monday. Uh, the most recent guys, the guys who haven't gotten to campus yet, are Jasheer Hardnett, Nick Smith, and David Pekarek. David is the most recent signee, meaning he was just in New York City last week with his mom. He's from the Czech Republic. Really skilled offensive player, like high-level offensive player. But he's a, he's a, he needs to develop his strength. He's not very strong. So, um, but he is a very intriguing young man. He's going to be a great player and a great student. And then the two other guys I mentioned are two young guards from one from Mississippi and the other from Memphis, Tennessee. And again, both of those guys will be coming to college basketball for the first time, so it's hard to know how much to depend on them. However, they both competed at high-level high school programs, meaning Jasheer won a state championship in, the, in Mississippi in his junior year, Nick Smith played on a team his junior year that had six Division One players on it, and they played a national schedule, and he was actually the leading scorer on that team. So they played at a high level. Um, two other, the two that have been on campus already, the two freshmen, Jesse Bunting is a very athletic and long rebounder. He's from Massachusetts. And the, the best player of the five is Joseph, I gotta work on my pronunciation, but Joseph from Montreal. <laughs> For his career, it might be known as Joseph from Montreal. But Joseph is a 20-year-old freshman, and the fact that he is older and more mature, he's really gonna play a lot this year. So it's very hard for high school guys to make the transition and play at the Atlantic 10 level. Joseph's gonna be a difference maker as a freshman, as one of our guards. Yes. To be question. I'm sorry. He, the question was, are these guys qualified? And um, yeah. right, so two of them have been on campus already. Take uh, the answer is yes. We, we just say yes, and if that doesn't turn out to be true, get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, is recruiting complete for the year? Um, the answer is thankfully. Um, recruiting never ends. Uh, but we have used all 13 of our scholarships for this year. And um, so it, that just finished here in the last five days when David Pekarak from the Czech Republic uh, sent his letter over and told us that he's going to be on a plane Monday coming to New York to go to summer school on Tuesday. So, yes, we are finished. We've used all 13 of our scholarships. As we look to our next recruiting class, we do have three seniors this year. And when I talk about a foundation being in place within your program, I'm talking about Mandel Thomas, who will be a senior and is about to have a terrific senior year. Ryan Rooms, who will be a senior who's about to explode. He has been a good player for Fordham. He's about to explode and just be significantly different as a player. And then Ryan Canty also is returning from a back injury. So we are replacing three good players in our next class, and that's where our, our energies are focused. I forget your name. This is from a former player here at Fordham. What's your name, sir? Steve Canal, Steve. I 
support the players, coming and talk to them, and given that we've been through this process, we've lived in the city, um, you have our support. So I well, this is yeah. And Steve, thank you for saying that. And it has been um, really cool to hear from the former players. And so I think you know some of you are aware of Bill Brown, and, and he's been to my office, and um, he uses the same words where he just wants to be supportive of our program. And so, Steve, thank you, and, and thank you to all of you guys for for being here tonight and making plans to come see us. Um, we do need everyone to do what people like Daryl Brown is doing. All right. But, so what Daryl's doing is Daryl's reaching out to his classmates and he is making a point to talk about the fact that there is a new coach and that the new era begins now. And so Steve, just being here tonight and all of you being here tonight, um, if you guys can just pass the word that we are trying to start something new, we absolutely need people to come out of the woodwork, all right, and support Florida basketball and help us jumpstart. I do think this is the year, all right. So I understand how bad you, the pain you felt, how many losses you've endured, but this is the year, and we do need to get the word out there so that we can fill Rose Hill Gym now. Yeah, um, so the games in Rose Hill include uh, LIU, Manhattan, Colgate, Central Connecticut, uh, and we are still working on the schedule, so in other words, there will be, um, hopefully within the month, we'll have it done. The question is, who would I like to play in the future? All right, and it's actually a really good question because I'd love to get this program to a point where we schedule Duke in the Garden and we beat them, and, we, and Marquette in the Garden and all those things. All right. This is where Fordham basketball is right now. We absolutely need to show the college basketball world that we can win. So. I would love to get our program, for example, I, our Eastern Kentucky team last year, we went down to Miami of Florida, and they were ranked 18th in the country, and we beat them on their home court by 28. That was a great feeling, all right? It really was. But that's not where we are right now at Fordham. Where we are is, we need to show recruits that we can win. And what I'm saying there is, when a young guy comes to campus, and we've had this happen here in the last three weeks, it's harder for them to envision Fordham winning. Now we've had a couple young men that have said, okay, I'm still gonna come, but then we also had a young man that said, coach, I'm sorry, like I hear what you're saying, I like you, et cetera, et cetera, but it's hard for me to envision. So the point is, at this point, we need to sell out Rose Hill Gym, regardless of who we're playing, and post a winning record so that recruits, especially in the future, understand that Fordham can win. Does that answer your question? Okay. So thank goodness Roger's here to remind me what I'm really supposed to talk about. Um, Roger just asked me to talk about our coaching staff, which is something I'm really proud of. Uh, Rodney Crawford has come with me from Eastern Kentucky, and Rodney, this will be our fourth year working together. Rodney is a sensational coach, and he is our defensive coordinator. And so I know that you hear that term all the time in football. The best thing that I did three and a half years ago was put Rodney in charge of our defense. He is absolutely determined to make our team great. He is a phenomenal coach, and I've said this in a lot of audiences. I've been in college coaching for 20 plus years. Other than John Beelon himself, Rodney Crawford's the best coach I've ever worked with. He's that good. So, Rodney Crawford, when you come to a game, 
try to figure out which guy that is. It won't be hard. He'll be the big, strong guy who's up screaming the whole game. Uh, we also wanted to have some New York City ties uh, on our coaching staff. And so Tony Childs was the first guy that I offered a job to other than Rodney. Tony Childs grew up in the Bronx, went to Columbia, played at Columbia. He's coached at Manhattan, Iona. In the last five years, he's been a coach at St. John's. We're very lucky to get Tony, and he has helped already recruiting-wise. Um, we've got great players in our gym every day, great high school prospects every day playing with our guys. And part of it's because of, of Tony's connections. The other um, person that's from New York City that's been incredibly helpful, and he's been on the Fordham staff for the last five years, and I gave him an interview that was, Yeah, so he got an interview that was, basically I told him this, I said, listen, hang around the office for a few weeks, you might be the best assistant coach in the country, and I still might not hire you. Well, he really did prove that he knew what he was doing, and so uh, Mike DiPaoli has stayed on our staff, and I'm really happy to have him. And, and Mike, Mike is an indicative of our team right now, just meaning he's a really eager, um, he's an eager young coach. Just like our guys that are in the locker room, they're just so hungry to show them what they can do and to make you all proud. Um, they, they've been a great group to work with, as, as Mike. Who else? I need at least one more break. Yes. So the question is, I've come to Fordham from a different region of the country, different program, different conference. How important is it for me to view Fordham basketball through different eyes? And the response is, I think any time that a program struggles, it's great to have someone come in and look at things with totally fresh eyes. Now, with that being said, I definitely watched not every game from last year, but I've watched a lot. Um, also, I've watched the A-10. I mean, so I'm doing everything I can to familiarize myself with the conference, with the team, with our personnel. However, it's very important for our team right now to start over have a new beginning, okay? And probably the whole Fordham community, as far as the struggles that Fordham basketball has endured, it's very important for our guys to have a fresh start. And I think they really appreciate the fact that what we do as coaches is completely different. It's a totally different routine, regimen. We do things differently, okay? Um, and, and just to address that specifically, as far as from a basketball standpoint, to win at this level, and I have great respect for the Atlantic 10. I mean, I'm not just talking about basketball or Division I basketball, I'm talking about the Atlantic 10 level. A team has to be a phenomenal defensive team. Not good, just phenomenal. And last year's Florida team was not that. And so that's where we're gonna help from the beginning, is that we are gonna give our guys a defensive mentality they're going to think of themselves as defenders, and I guarantee we will guard better than last year's Fordham team. At the offensive end, our team will have great value for the ball, and we're going to put shooters out there, and we're going to work on shooting like crazy. But we're going to shoot the ball significantly better, and we're going to have great value for the ball. So we're going to play the right way, and I, I think that's the best way to look at it, just looking at the game of basketball as far as how, how should this game be played, unselfish nature, playing really hard, and that's that's how our guys are starting to look at things. Thank you very much. So the question is about our strength training program, our strength coach, and that's like one of those softballs. Like, is this a setup or what? Yeah, yeah, all right, great. Um, all right, so in addition to bringing Rodney Crawford from Eastern Kentucky, uh, I brought with me a guy named Willie Cruz, and Willie played for us at EKU, 
and then was helping us as a strength coach, and he is so happy to be here in New York City. Um, he claims to be a Yankee fan. We went to the Yankees game together Monday night. I pointed up at the wall. He had no idea who Mickey Mantle was. <laughs> Even though he literally did not know who Mickey Mantle was, even when I gave him the first name, <laughs> Willie is terrific as a strength coach. He is absolutely outstanding. He's still yeah. He better be right. Um, but he has given our guys a new energy. Our our team loves working with him. Uh, we work out this time of year twice a week at 6:45 in the morning, and then we do our third lift at 11 a.m. And our guys have literally just been engaged all summer. And let me just mention this. It's so important in this day and age to have a great strength coach because we now can work with our players during the summer, meaning I can go on the court and our coaching staff can go on the court and coach these guys, but it's only two hours a week. They end up spending so much more time with our strength coach than they do with us this time of year. It's great to have a guy that you can trust and who really knows what the heck he's doing. So thank you for asking about Willie. It's one of our greatest strengths right now as a program is the fact that Willie Cruz is helping our guys get better. Okay, so the question is, how do I respond to those that say it's hard to recruit because we don't have a big arena. I firmly believe that this is not coach speak. I believe this. We have a great advantage. Our arena only seats 3,200 people. There are 23 million people in the tri-state area. <laughs> And, and again, I mean, I mean, if we sell out Rose Hill Gym, if Rose Hill Gym, and I understand that last year every game wasn't sold out. All right, it's a new year. If every game is sold out, and I can put a product on the court that wins along with that home court advantage, then it should be our greatest asset. If our arena were 8,000 seats and we couldn't sell that out, it doesn't matter. If we can't sell out a 3,200 seat arena, it doesn't matter how big your arena is. So, I literally look at it as a positive, as long as we, that's all of us, as long as we do our job, show up for the games, and bring people with you. And that, that's not a criticism of anything, Jerry, all right? It's just saying that's what we have to do to be successful. And I've got to do my part of putting a winning team on the court, and then you've got to do your part by bringing 10 enemies with you to a game. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I don't even want to hear the end of it. The beginning of his statement was, and I literally didn't even let him get to the end, he said, can you promise us? No, whatever you're about to say, no. <laughs> Actually, it is so interesting because the triangle offense, like I, I mean, I used, no, 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 I've studied the triangle offense, like, it really was, um, it's an intriguing thing. However, the analytics that are in the game of basketball now show that it is the wrong offense to play in basketball anymore. It's amazing what analytics can show us, but you end up taking the wrong shots when you run the triangle. So that's not the answer you were expecting. But the point is, we're going to play basketball um, in a very efficient manner. And what that means is we are going to shoot a lot of threes. And um, the triangle doesn't produce enough threes. Right. One more. I need one more before Dave Roach comes and steals the microphone. Yeah, ask me something. Yes. Settling into the New York area. Uh, great, thank you. So, personal question. Um, the question was, am I settling into the New York, New York area? I did live for the first two months 
with our assistant coach Rodney Crawford. He and I shared an apartment in White Plains. Um, beautiful area. And now his family's moved here and he has an apartment in White Plains. I've now moved into an apartment in Bronxville. My goal for this year, I'm just going to rent for this year. My wife is still in Kentucky. She'll move here when she feels like it. <laughs> but my, my number one thing for this year is I'm absolutely going to have the easiest commute of any New Yorker in this great city. And my drive is literally 11 minutes every day. We're going to rent for a year and then we'll figure it out. But I'm in the right spot for this year. Um, I want to thank all of you again for coming. I'm going to give the microphone back to Dave Roach. Um, I will tell you, if you want to do something good for Florida basketball, you can make a contribution and or we need you in Rose Hill Gym in November and December. Don't wait to see what all the hollering is all about. Thank you.